Hello everyone, welcome back aboard the Night Train for the April edition of Railway Roundup. Before we get going, I've noticed that we've had some 50 new subscribers since my last video, which is absolutely amazing. So I just wanted to say a huge welcome to the channel and thanks for checking my videos out. If you've not yet subscribed, please do so by clicking the subscribe button and also ringing that notification bell so you know the second I upload new videos in the future. And now it's time for the news. So let's see what's been going on on the railway network. Another month, another chapter in the West Coast Railway's central door locking mechanism saga. What a mouthful. Last month, services for the world famous Jacobite train, which travels over the Glenfinnan Viaduct in Scotland, were suspended as WCR appealed an exemption on central locking doors on their coaches. Eight members of Parliament submitted letters backing West Coast Railways and the reinstatement of their exemption on central locking doors due to the local economic benefits the Jacobite brings through tourism. They called for the Office of Road and Rail to allow exemptions and to consider the reapplication with an open mind. Shortly after this, it was announced by West Coast Railways that the Jacobite services were to resume, however, with a set of temporary coaches that were compliant with the ORR's requirements. This, however, resulted in shortened trains with more limited capacity, as well as the absence of the Harry Potter coach that is often part of the trains. Passengers were able to rebook their cancelled tickets. A positive first step, though unfortunately on the day services began running again, the steam engine broke down, causing confusion and delay up and down this stretch of the Highland Line. ScotRail were unable to run any trains between Fort William and Malague, while the stranded train had to be rescued by a diesel. West Coast Railways put the breakdown down to poor weather and has apologised, offering compensation to passengers affected. All in all, a trying time for West Coast Railways and the Jacobite. We'll have to see how this battle over central locking doors pans out and what action both sides will take in the future. Now on to the Heritage News, where the Great Central Railway has officially launched their reunification appeal. The Great Central Railway plans to raise over half a million pounds to connect both sections into a single 18 mile long stretch. In a statement, the Great Central Railway details revised plans, scrapping the idea of a 300 metre embankment for a combination of a 100 metre embankment and a new 200 metre viaduct for cost and simplicity's sake. Artwork has been produced showing this new section, and the link to the donation appeal can be found in the comments below. All in all, the Great Central Railway are steaming ahead with their very exciting preservation project, so we'll have to keep our eyes on this one to see how they do and when this is due to be completed. Also recently announced is the news of a new heritage attraction on the horizon due to open in summer this year. Hope Town Darlington will be opening at the site of North Road Station Museum in a Grade 2 listed carriage works and will contain various railway attractions such as exhibitions on the Stockton and Darlington Railway, historic steam locomotives and historically important diesel locomotives. On the same site in the old Darlington Locomotive Works, the A1 Steam Locomotive Trust are building their new build LNERP2, number 2007 Prince of Wales. Visitors will be able to see the progress for themselves from a viewing gallery. The centre is expected to play a major role in the upcoming bicentenary celebrations for the Stockton and Darlington Railway, and is shaping up to be a promising and historically important new heritage attraction. Exciting news broke from Backman at the Statfold Model Railway exhibition earlier this month just when I arrived there and lost all my phone signal. Backman have announced a brand new 7mm narrow gauge range called the NG7 range. In all honesty, this is just an upscaling of their existing 009 items to O-16.5 7mm scale. Announced so far with samples shown are a set of quarry hunslets, some slate and flatbed wagons and O-16.5 scale buildings. I saw the prototypes in person at Statfold and at the Key Model World Live exhibition and they do look impressive, offering a larger, more practical way for people to model narrow gauge locomotives than 009. More details are expected in the summer announcements from Backman, but production is far enough along with finished models expected to hit shops later this year. 
an exciting curveball of an announcement that I definitely wasn't expecting. We'll have to see how this new scale does and also how it plays out along with TT120 also being a new competing scale on the market. TT120 is very much going smaller with big locos while NG7 is going big but with small locos. So it's going to be interesting to see what the demands are for the two when they're both out. Let me know if this new range is of interest to you in the comments below and if it's something that you're excited to pick up or potentially see more of as it develops into a more fully fledged range in the future. Model Railway seem to be living on at the NEC despite Worley bowing out after last year's exhibition. With the National Festival of Railway Modelling scheduled for November, Rapido have been announced as the first major sponsors of this new show. Not much is known, but Rapido say their stand will be very different from the norm and that they have something special planned, including a first for an exhibition. Short but sweet, exciting news of what to come, so we'll have to see what Rapido have up their sleeve come November. Trains in London were brought to a stop recently by a family of geese. A pair of Egyptian goose parents and their goslings took a leisurely stroll in southwest London along one of the lines, stopping trains for two hours. Described as total chaos, it does at least make for some cute watching. On a more serious, controversial note, several century-old historic steam locomotives are due to be overhauled to a new form of power battery power. Efteling, the largest steam park in the Netherlands, is converting its fleet of narrow gauge steam engines over to battery power in order to become carbon neutral by 2030 and climate positive by 2032. The nostalgic appearance of steaming engines will be maintained, they say, using fitted special effects, but it's not clear if this includes more atmospheric elements of a steam locomotive such as the sense of burning coal and the authentic sounds of different whistles. While any move towards net zero is a much needed one, this one feels slightly controversial considering they're changing the entire internal mechanics of a really old artefact of engineering. It is unlikely to catch on with full scale steam locos here in the UK, so it is an interesting experiment at least. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on this one. And that's the Railway Roundup for this month. A lot of interesting things happening. We have a new range, fumbling charters and battery bonanzas. Are you excited for NG7 or aghast at the thought of steam locomotives being converted over to batteries? Comment your thoughts below and just another thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in another video. Take care.